Good afternoon to everybody. Sorry about the small delay. We had uh, some small technical issues, but uh, now we are ready. And I would like to, first of all, welcome Anders Carlson from Idogen, who is going to uh, talk about uh, his company and the very interesting pipeline of products. Secondly, I would like to um, welcome the audience today. Really nice of you to participate, even though it's so hot outside. Uh, last but not least, uh, please post your questions in the chat on the right side, and uh, I will pass them through to Anders during the presentations. Uh, presentation, sorry. So, Anders, uh, please uh, go ahead and uh, present you and Idogen. Hello everyone, my name is Anders Karlsson and I am the CEO of Idrian, a Swedish public company listed on the Nasdaq First North. Uh, we are developing telogenic cell therapy, which is a treatment which is innovative and also potentially starts a new era in treatment of severe and chronic diseases. Uh, a brief uh, Overview of the agenda today. I will give you an introduction to our telogenic cell therapy, talk about key activities uh, for the past year, our prioritized project, but also key activities this year and ahead. And just a, a brief introduction to the company. We are a biotech company in Sweden, South Sweden, in Lund, uh, founded in 2008, and we have 16 employees. We are listed on the Nasdaq First North growth market since June last year. Before that, we was on the spotlight stock market since 2015. We have a new technology, uh, and uh, we improved the main component, the important component in our telogenic cell therapy two years ago, which gives us a very positive position in terms of IP protection. We applied for patent locally in UK uh, one and a half year ago in January 2019, and we upgraded that to an international application in December the past year which gives us a market exclusivity until 2040, which is 20 years of, 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 uh, of, of, of a possibility to operate without competition in the market. We are developing a platform of Torogenic Cell Therapy. Our first project, IDO8, is, is uh, directed towards hemophilia patients who has developed uh, neutralizing antibodies for the treatment with factor eight, the clotting factor factor eight, which uh, is the main treatment for these patients. And we uh, will then uh, have a way to, to neutralize these antibodies and possibly also be able to continue with the factor eight treatment. We have received a second validation from the European Commission. We received the Horizon 2020 fundings uh, in 2017. We uh, received 30 million Swedish kronas to cover partly the development of this indication. And we are now in a stage to enter into the first in human clinical study for this indication. So we have a very exciting one and a half year in front of us. Financial status. We entered this year with around 50 million Swedish kronas uh, on the bank account. We are well funded and we also have a, a, a warrant uh, that with the current uh, share price is covered us with cash until a year from now. Anders, just very briefly uh, to take a step backward to explain these new type of uh, cell therapies, uh, because mm -hmm. it's not only you working with this, there's actually a cluster of company, uh, companies uh, uh, in the Eurasund region, but also in Sweden in general. Can you very briefly uh, tell the audience, what is this all about? 
I, 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 then I think I should move to my next slide, uh, which is, let's say, giving a little bit more highlights. I mean, cell therapy aims to treat disease by using cells uh, to repair or change other cells in the body. So what you actually do is that you try to cure instead of treat symptoms. Uh, the cells that you use are cultured or modified outside the body. Uh, before you are injecting them into the patient. And the cells can come from the patient, which is the thing in our case, but it can also come from a separate donor. But, but to summarize this, uh, we are developing a treatment that should be able to cure instead of, of, of treating symptoms as the more traditional medication is doing, I should say. Good, thanks. Uh, and our uh, treatment uh, has the aim to manage uh, the situations or three situations that we have identified when the immune system has become your enemy. We have identified uh, situations when uh, uh, the body or the immune system identify important uh, biological drugs as enemies to the bodies and the immune system then want to, to uh, eradicate them. Uh, the transplantation situation where you normally get the rejection after getting a new transplant. Today you treat the patients with a long lifelong treatment of immunosuppressant. We are trying to find a solution around that. And all these kind of autoimmune diseases where the immune system erroneously attacks the body's own cells and tissues. And all in these cases, we are then trying to, to uh, uh, turn off this unwanted immune reaction. So this is what immune, immune uh, therapy is, is doing. And if we look into the technology in a broad perspective, we have a platform technology, uh, which is patentable. And as I said, we handed that in uh, finally for international application in December the past year that covers the platform. It covers the process to make the cell therapy, and it also covers a lot of separate indications. We have three identified projects, IDO8, which focuses on hemophilia, uh, IDO-T, which focuses on kidney transplantation with a living donor, and also treatment of autoimmune diseases, which is a big group of different diseases when the body's immune system attacks uh, the, its own cells. All these are today defined projects within the company. Uh, to understand uh, the technology, uh, we, we are saying that these uh, dendritic cells are the, 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 the one that decides if something, cells in the bodies are friends or are foe. And the immune system, if there is cancer cells and virus and bacteria, as you see on the left-hand side, the red side, then the immune system activate the immune response in order to take away this response. On the right-hand side, then you see uh, the tolerogenic side where you instead uh, want to, with the body immune system, get it tolerate and to accept a new organ, a medication or something else that potentially would trigger the immune system. And you want to strengthen with our medication, the right hand, and to create these regulatory C cells, T cells, which is dampening the immune response, very specific for the triggers that is the one that initiate this, this reaction. So it's, it's a very specific uh, dampering of, of the immune system that we are doing. And um, this is how we do it. We are focused on the right side. We let the immune system understand that the organ, the medical treatment or others is so to say good friends to the immune system and will accept it. We are using uh, the patient's own cells. The cell therapy is tailor-made. So we collect the monocytes from the patients. 
the white blood cells and then we send them to our manufacturing sites where we is taking uh, the monocytes we introduce them to the antigen which is the one that triggers the immune response together with our patentable tolerance inducer that these three components together creates the telogenic dendritic cells which actually is the tailor-made uh, cell therapy for the specific disease this is the one that then sends back to the hospital for the treatment of the patients and then we hope to get a long-term tolerance for the antigen that has caused this unwanted reaction uh, we took a very important decision one and a half year ago we decided not to manufacture our cell therapy by ourselves and develop that uh, we uh, made an agreement with Radboud University Medical Center in the Netherlands and the team there who has been uh, manufacturing and developing uh, cell therapies for more than 20 years. So instead of we doing that process by ourselves, we took our innovations from the lab bench and we have then collaboration to develop this specific treatment for the clinical trial at a specialist and we have saved millions of doing that uh, innovative step uh, and also gives a flexibility for the future to be able to to adapt that to potential partners in the future um, so this was an important step uh, and was one of the things that was very critical after that we have upgraded the technology in the mid 2019 that was the partnership as well as the patent application. The past year we spent a lot to prepare for clinical trial, a lot of regulatory preclinical work, but also discussions with clinicians that will be uh, uh, the centers that is assessing our technology for hemophilia patients in the upcoming clinical trial. We also made an uplisting uh, to NASDAQ First North in June the past year. And we have also had a lot of discussions with potential future partners, uh, updating them about our technology, where we are, and also potential opportunities uh, for the future. Anders, you told me before um, that actually you, you are not interested in bringing the product all the way through uh, phase three by yourself, but, but you're actually focusing on, on partnerships. Could you elaborate a little on that or do you have a slide later on showing that? No, I, I, I can give a brief answer at the stage now. I think that's that's relevant. And, and uh, as we are now, I mean, we are the specialist in the cell therapy uh, and we want for sure uh, as the next step now to prove the efficacy or the, and the safety in humans. So this is where our next step is, is the, the, the objective to, to prove that. Uh, and by doing that, we will have a, a, a totally different valuation if successful. Mm. We, are, we are then moving from a step where we are pre-clinical, we go into clinical and we also have data to share. And a lot of potential partners want to have this first step before they want to step, step into discussions. But there is also critical to have this first indication hemophilia, also to initiate discussions with transplantation, but also the autoimmune diseases. So, so I should say that for us, this is a very interesting stage that we are in for the moment, that, that taking it from the lab into the patient and also to be able to, to have some kind of proof of concept in human. Mm. Uh, as the next step, as the next yeah. trigger, you could say. Yeah, because one thing is your project, the Hemophilia, the IDO, IDO 8, but, but you also have your platform that can mm. actually work uh, with, with different diseases, Yeah, uh, as, as I understand it. So, so you can probably also partnering on, on the platform, uh, as I understand it. Yeah, that, that that's correct. And, and uh, I should say that uh, uh, some companies are very specialized in, in specific indication, but since our platform is so broad, moving from uh, 
uh, uh, targeting biological treatments, uh, transplantation, but also into autoimmune diseases, I think that there would be room to to think about the different solutions for partnerships in the future, yes. Yes. Then there's a small question coming in here from from uh, from, from another participant, Anders. It's about your IDO8 project. And, and now today we have a couple of Danes, uh, and, and they focus, of course, of, on one of the majors within hemophilia, uh, Novo Nordisk. They got a Novo 7 product. And how does that differ? From, from your uh, project and product? Uh, um, the, the main treatment today for, for hemophilia A is, is factor A treatment, and that is the, the, the treatment of care. Uh, and uh, that's the starting treatment. Uh, and I should say that, that factor eight treat, uh, factor seven treatment is, or factor, uh, other factor treatments is, is where you have problems with the treatment. But we, with our treatment, we want to build the opportunity for, for, for the patient to continue. Uh, to substitute uh, what the patient is missing, uh, namely factor eight clotting factor. Uh, and by doing this, we will take away the neutralizing antibodies and be able to continue. So, so this is how we see it. Yeah. So, so you are actually in an earlier stage compared to, to the more specialized factors. Yeah, we, we, we would see it that. I mean, the first step uh, after receiving this neutralizing antibodies is that you start what you call an ITI treatment, where you give increasingly high doses of, of factor eight and trying to tolerate that way. That is uh, both a very expensive, but also painful way for the patient to be treated with high doses very often in one and a half year. So if we would position us in a situation where we have proved the success of our concept, we will then hope to be earlier in, uh, in this process to be able to, when you develop these antibodies, see us as an early step uh, into creating a tolerance and then be able to continue with a factor A treatment, which also is for sure available from, from Novo Nordisk uh, as factor A treatment. Anders, do you, do you have any estimates on um, the treatment today compared to uh, if you succeed, and we hope so with IDO8, uh, what that will cost in, in comparison? Uh, I mean, it's uh, uh, if, if, if you go are able to continue with factor eight. I mean that that is 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 a cost of around one one million Swedish kronas or slightly less than that in Danish kronas a year. Uh, but the the treatment you're using instead uh, of factor eight can be as expensive. For example, Hemlibra, uh, a new Swiss drug, about four and a half million Swedish kronas a year. Okay. Uh, and and then to be able to continue with, with the base treatment factor eight would be a significant uh, difference, uh, uh, assuming that we will be able to create tolerance with our treatment. Mm -hmm. uh, a normal uh, one payment of cell therapies for other indications, the price tag for that is around uh, four and a half million uh, uh, as, 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 as a single treatment. So, so that, that would be cost efficient, hopefully, but that will also uh, allow you to continue with, with, with the treatment that is the most lo logical uh, factor mm. A treatment. Good. Hmm? Okay, uh, then we move into the projects and here you see hemophilia A uh, and patients that, that has uh, uh, developed antibodies towards their factor A treatment. And as all of you know, uh, this is only directed towards men. Uh, and the factor A treatment, as I mentioned, is the standard of care. And in around one out of three, uh, these patients uh, they develop uh, the immune system attacks and destroys the, the, the drug by antibodies. And as I said, the cost is around uh, 100,000 Danish Swedish kronas a year but could be as high as up to 1 million US dollars or eight to 10 million uh, Swedish kronas a year. And uh, he, here we see the position for, for this drug uh, in the future. If we look into where we are in terms of, of development stage, uh, we are now uh, in, in the right hand 
where we have the two final steps uh, before moving into clinic, which is sending the clinical trial application uh, uh, now in August, and also to start the clinical trial before uh, end this year. We expect an approval uh, November, December for starting the clinical trial. Moving into transplantation, the second indication, that's a huge indication, approximately 90,000 kidney transplants is performed every year globally. Uh, these patients get lifelong immunosuppressive treatments uh, to reduce the risk for the rejection. And there is a large medical need, much to say, uh, to lower the need of, of immunosuppressant because that gives also side effects in terms of increased risk, risk for infections, increased risk for cancer, but also a direct immunotoxic effect of these uh, immunosuppressant drugs. And with this treatment, we aim to educate the immune system to tolerate the kidney transplants and by removing uh, and also remove the need for, for immunosuppressants in the future. The way we're doing it here is that we also take the patient cells and we are then at the same time also uh, taking uh, cells from the donor. And this is initially the indication with a living donor. Uh, so you can prepare this before you perform the transplantation. So cells from the patient, cells from the donor, together with our tolerance inducer, which gives us the cocktail or the treatment for these patients. So you pre-treat before performing transplantation. So the objective is to already before you start transplantation to, to have a tolerance for the uh, uh, donor, for the donor's organ in the body. Uh, here we are not so advanced yet. We have developed a platform. Now we are moving into a step where we should adapt that to the indication transplantation. So we're doing preclinical safety trials. We are also uh, in discussions with, with academia uh, to develop this in a good clinical way. But then as the next step, we move into a, a, a stage where we should start to design protocols for clinical trials uh, for the future. So, so this is where we are now, and in parallel with the I-8 study, we will then continue the development of, of, of the I-8 indication. The orphan autoimmune diseases is also where we're targeting. As I said, there is more than 100, and then you can, in this funnel, define those that potentially would fit the best. And here we see this as an opportunity for the company to potentially develop together with the partner, specialist in specific diseases. It could be kidney disease, it could be other chronic diseases such as diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, where we together, where we are specialists on the cell therapy, the company are specialists for, for the specific disease, could do this together in, in an agreement. So, so here we are open. And there's also a lot of different diseases where we can aim at uh, in, in, in an agreement. If we look so, at a small question here regarding um, uh, the kidney uh, transplantation and, and your technology there, how, how does that market look today, Anders? Because it's quite a lot of patients. And as you mentioned, um, what happens or what what is the, the great risk is actually that the patients immune system um, push away uh, the, the donor's uh, new uh, kidney, as I understand it. Uh, the, 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 the risk uh, to, to get an early rejection is relatively low okay. uh, together with the transplantation because you have a very good immunosuppressants, uh, so you can block that risk. The risk is the long-term use of immunosuppressants and you want to keep the organ alive as long as possible, especially mm -hmm. when you're giving your organ as a gift uh, from, from a family member. You want to have that as long as possible. Because the day when you do not have the use or, 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 or if that uh, you get too, too low efficacy of, of, of your kidney, then you need to go back to, to dialysis again. 
Wow. And so the longer you can have a good function of the kidney, assuming that the immunosuppressant is the one that, that is, is declining uh, the effect of the kidney, then you want to keep that dose as low as possible. So the objective with our treatment is to lower the dose of immunosuppressant and keep the organ alive as long as possible. Because today patients die on the waiting list to get the first or the second or the third kidney. Wow. Okay, then there's a small other question here coming in. You mentioned other diseases, so your eye uh, technology. Uh, could you elaborate a little more on on uh, on on those areas and maybe also uh, on on the size of, of some of the areas, uh, the market size? Yeah, I mean, uh, th there are a lot of different perspective here. Uh, I mean, uh, one is so say it it preferable it should be perceived as an orphan drug mm -hmm. uh, then uh, the, the the willingness to pay for a treatment is usually higher uh, it could be a severe treatment uh, but you can also see diabetes type 1 uh, as as uh, as an autoimmune disease which is quite common which is a lifelong treatment also with a relative uh, lifelong and cumbersome treatment, especially for kids. So, so, so that could be one, uh, but it can also be, be very severe, uh, very rare kidney diseases. It can also be rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, so, so the range is broad. Okay. So, so it can be very, very rare diseases, but it can also be, so to say, very, very common, but also, diseases which is actually shortened your life uh, and where you are willing then to pay and to make this investment of a cell therapy doing it once mm -hmm. yeah uh, key activities uh, for this year i have mentioned that but but we are very much to finalize and to start the clinical trial for ido8 for idot we are accelerating the development uh, and also to move into a preclinical stage, uh, assessing different uh, concepts and fine tune for and preparing for clinical trial as a next step for 2022-2023. And also an, and a very important uh, thing to do is to very, work very closely with the global big pharma companies to share where we are, update them on, on what we're doing in a way that, that keep them to understand that we're moving in the right direction as a, as a development company. Mm -hmm. The management team, um, broad experience has somehow has been with the company uh, six, seven years. The group on the bottom here uh, is recruited in the past year, very much focused on, on the new indications and the situation we are in. The, Vicky in the middle is regulatory expert. Osa is a clinical expert uh, in development of transplantation treatment, uh, has been at Hansa Biomedical, also a well-known company. Uh, Christina Bratström is a transplantation surgeon from Karolinska Institute in Stockholm uh, and has also broad experience from, from factor A treatment in her role as medical director at, at Bayer in Sweden. She was actually no, no Nordic medical director at Bayer. So, so that is the management team and most of them are, are also shareholders in the company. Uh, so we believe in the company uh, as such. Uh, here is the board of directors, one of the founders in the board, Leif Salford. Uh, Lennart Svensson is CFO from Midsona, also a Swedish mid-cap company. Uh, and his role is to, to uh, take a position in the board when we are making our journey from First North into the Nasdaq list uh, as the next objective within one year. Sharon Longhurst is the uh, manufacturing director uh, at uh, Immunicum, also public uh, Swedish company. Christina Herr, the business development manager at Medivir, another Swedish uh, public company. And Agneta Edberg is, is uh, the chairman of the board, has a commercial background, but also very broad experience in cell therapy, uh, early stage companies. So this is a uh, 
a solid board, experienced board, but also shareholders in the company also, which I think is very important uh, mm -hmm. when you judge the company uh, as such. Scientific advisors, we have a very strong advisory board uh, on the hemophilia side. We have several, but but main advisor is Rolf Jung, professor in Malmö Lund, and and uh, globally well known uh, researcher scientist in this area. Uh, in transplantation, we have Professor Bojan Eriksson uh, uh, from Karolinska Institute and Professor Jan Holgersson from Salgrenska. Jan Holgersson is more in 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 the in immunological details. Bojaran is, is the surgeon and the broad experience in this area. We have Jolanda de Vries, specialist in dendritic cell therapy and based in Radboud. And also Michaela Sharp from UK, exper expert in, in safety assessment of, of, of advanced cell therapies. So we have a very senior advisor team, I should say, looking into that. Okay. So if we then summarize uh, the company and, and where we are, uh, we have very well advanced projects uh, and a clear strategy ahead. Uh, we have a strong uh, IP situation and potentially patent protection until 2040. Uh, we have a strong partner uh, for the manufacturing uh, of um, treatment for the clinical trial in Radboud University Medical Center. We aim at clinical readiness end this year and to be able to start clinical trial. And we're also looking then for, for, for partnerships for the future, uh, further development of our concepts. So I would say that that's where we are. And uh, having that said, thank you to all. And I'm also willing to ask, answer questions from, from you. Yes. Thanks, Lola. I'm just, um, just to look at, at the chat here to see if more is coming up. There's a question about partnerships here. Um, if you could elaborate a little on that, especially for IDO 8. So, and, and one ask here, is it possible that you could actually work with Novo on this? Um, uh, <laughs> Well, um, I, know, but <laughs> I mean, the, you can say that a logical partner would be a company that is actually developing uh, 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 factor A treatment uh, because mm -hmm. that would allow them to, to take uh, uh, a larger bite of the market, having one more tool in the box. Uh, but there are many different, so to say, uh, I uh, factor eight uh, manufacturers and for sure Novo Nordisk is one uh, and Sobe is another, uh, Bayer is another, CSL Bering is another. Mm -hmm. uh, so so yes, I mean there, there are different opportunities but but we see Nova as a very very good company. Yeah. Then there's a, one uh, question here uh, regarding your your uh, your stockholders or the largest owners of the company and, uh, and, and there's one question here next time you're looking for money are you looking for a, a big anchor investor um, and then uh, a deviation of that for Monor is are they in for the long run uh, for Mono, they was in uh, when we have the the last new issue uh, and, and they have been quite stable uh, as owners since that. And that was in November, December past year. Uh, they have a history to, to sometimes be short in the company, uh, sometimes stay longer. Uh, I cannot uh, tell or, or share or know what the plans is, but, but as I see it, I mean, they are a, a large shareholder and has been that since, since uh, November, December the past year. Okay. okay. And and for the time being, we have around three thousand eight hundred shareholders. So quite quite a broad range of shareholders, uh, both from small uh, life science investors that wants to have some kind of a, 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 a potential upside in 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 their portfolio. Others is is. Uh, 
bigger shareholders in the company. So I would say that the range is quite broad, uh, how mm -hmm. the shareholders look like. Good, Anders. Good. Well, I think it's more or less it, Anders. Um, uh, so first of all, thanks a lot, Anders, for your run through of, uh, of the company. Very, very interesting and very interesting uh, um, autumn as well uh, for the company. And uh, secondly, I would like to thank all our participants and especially for, for the questions. Um, and I hope you will be back and listen to Anders later on because we will present Anders later on, uh, August, September, uh, when interesting things are coming up. So to you, Anders, have a very nice day. And also to the audience, have a very nice day. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Klaus. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.